Siri, what is the weather like outside? It's currently clear and 87 degrees. Expect partly cloudy skies starting tonight. Today's high will be 88 and the low will be 82 degrees. Siri. Uh huh. What is 4 times 12 times 500 divided by 3? It's 8,000. Hmm. What just happened? You've just heard me communicating with a built-in app on my iPhone, asking a question and getting a response. Siri is a voice-activated tool that mimics the intelligence of humans, interpreting voice instructions or questions and responding and performing actions. It is a part of Apple's operating system and can play music, make calls or send messages, give you sports scores, set reminders, open apps, and perform many other useful tasks. If you've ever spoken to Siri or Amazon's Alexa before, then you have used artificial intelligence, or AI. Welcome to the 13th episode of the BZ Diocese podcast. On the 12th May, we are celebrating World Day of Social Communication, also known as World Communications Day. It is an annual celebration established by Pope Paul VI in 1967. It is also a day to reflect on the opportunities and challenges that modern means of communication afford the church to communicate the gospel message. They include the press, radio, film, television, and the internet. The day is observed by the Vatican and dioceses around the world on the Sunday before Pentecost. This year, it will be celebrated on the theme, Artificial Intelligence and the Wisdom of the Heart towards a fully human communication. In this special edition of our podcast, Marie Munoz, CEO of Guadalupe Media, is joining Pete and I from the Diocesan Media Center to bring you a very important message about the very fascinating topic of artificial intelligence. The Diocesan Media Center and Guadalupe Media collaborate to bring God's message to the far reaches of Belize. Across the globe, the topic of AI has been creating headlines. Some of you may already be familiar with what AI is, but for those who aren't so sure, we hope we can ignite your interest and lead you to start asking a lot of questions. In this episode, we will not be having a discussion. Instead, we will be providing answers to specific questions that will hopefully help to clarify what AI is all about. Let's get started. So, what is artificial intelligence or AI? First, intelligence is the ability to learn and to deal with new situations. When your phone or computer or a robot interprets external data, learns from such data, and uses that learning to solve a problem, perform a task, or respond to language. It may seem to be intelligent. However, this type of intelligence is different from human intelligence. This type of intelligence is known as artificial intelligence or AI. But how does AI work? AI is modeled on the human brain. AI systems gather data, descriptions, images, text, instruction, etc., and learn through what we call machine learning, identifying patterns and trends to make their own decisions about how best to respond to complete specific tasks. It automates this repetitive learning, performing frequent high-volume complex computerized tasks efficiently at high speeds. But unlike the human brain, AI does not have the capability of linking this learned information to all our life experiences. Why is AI important? AI is important because it has the potential to change how we work, play, think, communicate, and live. It exists in our homes, workplaces, in education, banking, transportation, business, law, entertainment, 
and media. In other words, in our day-to-day lives. AI exists in every facet of our lives. Here are just a few examples. We use smartphones throughout the day. And when we unlock these devices using biometrics such as Face ID or fingerprint, we are using AI. Google it. This has become a famous expression, which means get it from the web. Search engines use AI to scan the whole internet and deliver your requested data in a flash. How about social media? AI works behind the scenes to personalize what you see on your feeds. And when you send emails, AI tools run spell check, check for spam, and protect you from viruses. Enter the directions on your phone and you'll be guided to your location. Ask Siri to call a name in your contacts and the phone starts dialing. These are digital voice assistants using natural language processing driven by AI to respond to you. AI is facilitating the diagnosis of diseases in hospitals around the world. And when you shop online, AI lets Amazon show what people like you are shopping for and show you items similar to those you are searching for. Generative AI, using tools like ChatGPT, can suggest wording for a document your teen is writing for his assignment. By entering a brief description into a computer, an artist can now generate a photo or a drawing looking like an original image. This is just a brief glimpse of how AI is being used. Do you think you now know what artificial intelligence is? Well, if artificial intelligence is so good, why is there increasing concern around the world about its use? Well, in fact, the concern is not really about its use, but more so about its misuse. AI can generate and analyze tons of data efficiently and quickly. Using this capability, it can mimic human capabilities such as reasoning, thinking, and communication to learn and carry out complex tasks that require almost human intelligence. With this kind of capability, we have already seen the use of the AI deepfake technology to create and manipulate images, to impersonate and extort people, to spread misinformation, to create fake sexually explicit videos or audio. The term deepfake, the word is a combination of deep learning and fake, has become synonymous with artificial intelligence. Deepfake media overlays an image or video on an existing image. It uses machine learning and AI to manipulate the image and even audio to make it look and sound like someone else. There is no major concern for its potential to create child sexual abuse videos, fake pornographic material of non-consenting people as has recently been appearing on the news fake news and a host of other highly impactful products aimed at extortion, revenge and disinformation. But the Catholic Church has not been silent on this topic. It has been addressed by the Vatican and the Pope over several years. In this year's World Social Communication Day message, the Pope clearly defined the current problem saying, We have now become capable of creating highly sophisticated machines that act as a support for thinking. Each of these instruments, however, can be abused by the primordial temptation to become like God without God. That is, to want to grasp by our own effort what should instead be freely received as a gift from God to be enjoyed in the company of others. He said, Artificial intelligence systems can help to overcome ignorance and facilitate the exchange of information between different peoples and generations. Yet, at the same time, they can be a source of cognitive pollution, a distortion of reality by partially or completely false narratives, believed and broadcasted, 
as if they were true. Even while praising the benefits, the Pope urges the ethical use of artificial intelligence and calls for regulation. I quote, There is a need to act preventatively by proposing models of ethical regulation to forestall harmful, discriminatory, and socially unjust effects of the use of systems of artificial intelligence. Close quote. He recently raised this issue when he addressed the Minerva Dialogues, a high-level annual gathering of scientists and experts organized by the Vatican Dicastery for Education and Culture in the Vatican. He said, I am convinced that the development of artificial intelligence and machine learning has the potential to contribute in a positive way to the future of humanity. At the same time, Pope Francis cautioned, I am certain that this potential will be realized only if there is a constant and consistent commitment on the part of those developing these technologies to act ethically and responsibly. In March 2023, a fake AI-generated image of Pope Francis wearing a white puffy jacket went viral online. It went viral because, well, he's the Pope, a celebrity, and the image looked frighteningly real, but it was later debunked as fake by Vatican. A careful look at the image will show a blurred hand holding a blurred coffee cup and a reflection of his glasses in his own glasses. Telltale signs of fakery. You know what? Tomorrow, this could be you. As we close, we are reminded that with technology, there is always something new popping up and being replaced by something else. But AI, or artificial intelligence, is here to stay. AI is scary. AI fakes are becoming more and more believable, and soon it will be impossible to make the distinction between real and imaginary. We are already living in an era where AI can make our lives so productive amid grave concerns of data privacy, surveillance concern, etc. In the not-too-distant future, our children will be living the full reality of artificial intelligence with all its benefits while using AI tools to constantly verify that they are not being victims of AI abuse. In the meantime, let's ask the questions. How will AI affect the social and emotional well-being of our children? What are the potential dangers? Are there laws to protect us and our kids? How can we safeguard our children from the risks of AI? Are our political and education systems involved? I implore you, ask more questions and start seeking answers now. And thank you for tuning in to our podcast. This episode has been brought to you in collaboration with the Guadalupe Media. We thank Marie Munoz and her team for joining us to bring you this special episode in video as well as in audio. We hope that we have been able to spark your interest in this phenomenal technology that's poised to impact every aspect of our lives for better or for worse. We trust that you will search for more answers and become better informed. Next month is Family Month, and in our next episode, we will be discussing ways to a stronger family bond. See you next time.